Asking the question, what is Kronos, is the same as asking, what is time? In Greek mythology, Kronos was the personification of time. The metaphor exists in our modern world today as an image of the elderly Father Time with a long white beard, holding the zodiac, pendulum, hourglass or clock. In remote viewing, Kronos is a metaphor of the human concept of time. What exactly is time? Quantum mechanics have postulated that time does not really exist due to the very strange interactions of subatomic particles. Many of the world's leading physicists believe at the most basic and fundamental level of reality, time does not exist. That everything we perceive as now, or the present, has in fact already occurred and our human conscious awareness is merely catching up with what has already transpired and is apparently manifesting as temporal reality. This necessarily implies that the everyday phenomenological world that we perceive ourselves transiting within in a linear, step-by-step, moment-by-moment existence is not the basic fundamental level of reality that we have been led to believe and rely upon. An appropriate analogy and another way to conceptualize this idea is to imagine a jet aircraft that is traveling faster than the speed of sound. When you look up to see the physical craft, it is already out of sight and the sound of its engines merely follow or chase the same trajectory through space that the craft has already transited. The reality we see around us is much like this conceptually. Reality has already occurred and our conscious awareness is much like the sound that is chasing the plane. But what if we could put our conscious awareness into the cockpit of the aircraft? The development of Kronos finally allows even intermediate skill level remote viewers the capability to solve time-based targeting problems with relative ease. Understanding how Kronos works requires us to delve into how time works and to set forth a few definitions and concepts so the protocol modifications and methodology presented later make sense. The first concept of time has already been briefly discussed and we will expand on that information now. If quantum physicists are correct in their theories, then time as we consciously experience it does not really exist. The linear transit that we consciously perceive as time is merely an echo or projection of some thing that has already occurred and our conscious awareness is merely experiencing this temporal reality after the fact. One might think now that this obviates the concept of free will, but it does not, as will be explained shortly. The second concept is known as quantum information theory. Information is physical, and being physical, it has energy and mass. Information exists outside of our conscious awareness as quantum information patterns. All of the universe is composed of quantum information patterns that are held in a particular state within the quantum system. There is compelling research that indicates the universe operates as a vast quantum computer and quantum network, its computations creating the world we see around us. This necessarily implies that the fundamental unit of quantification in the universe is information. This makes logical sense because how would you, I, or the universe build a thing without first having the information about how to build it? We humans cannot build a building without blueprints. Nor can the universe create a galaxy without first having the informational blueprints that describe the structure and component systems of a galaxy. Using terminology borrowed from quantum computing, we can refer to these information units as qubits. A qubit is a quantum bit. Just as our personal computers store, retrieve and process information as bits, the universe stores, retrieves and processes information as qubits. For those inquisitive students of remote viewing, more information about this perspective can be found in Seth Lloyd's book, Programming the Universe. The third concept is quantum information patterns. The qubits discussed previously arrange themselves into what we can refer to as quantum information patterns. These quantum information patterns, or quips, are what the remote viewer's unconscious awareness is actually examining. Everything in the universe, whether it's an idea, person, place, thing, event, or anything at all, 
has an information pattern in what is referred to as the matrix. When a person remote views a future event, their unconscious awareness examines the information pattern of that event in the matrix. and passes the perceived data back to conscious awareness. The fourth concept is the matrix. The matrix can be thought of as a naturally occurring, self-organizing, hyperdimensional, relational database structure which contains a complete index of everything that exists in the past, present and future, as well as the unrealized outcomes of all possible unmanifested timelines that are associated with a particular universe or world line. The Everett Dewitt model of the many worlds interpretation postulates there are multiple world lines, but only one manifests that we consciously realize. Our conscious awareness is bound to that one world line due to quantum constraints. We cannot in the short time we have on this DVD explain the theories that support this concept, but if you would like to research it further, we direct you to the Everett Dewitt model of the many worlds interpretation and Professor Stuart Hameroff and Roger Penrose's ORC, or Model of Quantum Consciousness. We humans have no way of modifying or changing the orbit of our solar system within our galaxy. No amount of meditation, wishful thinking, or concentration will accomplish this feat. Humans cannot modify or change the orbit of our little planet Earth as it transits around the Sun. The Sun is destined to rise in the east and set in the west until such time as some force of nature that is beyond the scope of human understanding causes it to do otherwise. So there are things that are beyond the control of any human or group of humans. But there are things that are under our direct individual control. Those things in our lives that we control are where we are on the planet, where we go, and the decisions we make. Those things are really the only things we can control directly, but even those decisions are influenced by the actions and decisions of others. So ultimately, most people must be destined to do what they do, just as the sun is destined to rise and set in the place that it has for eons. Unless they are a remote viewer and use the skills they have learned to know what is approaching over the horizon. If we consider the research done by the remote viewing consortium during the development of Kronos, then the data indicates that approximately 80% of reality is predestined and approximately 20% of reality is left to chaos and chance. Perhaps one day in the future, we will have confirmation from science.